Stood here on this, these prominent, very flat outcrops of reddish brown rock that are very, very gently dipping. In places, they're basically sub-horizontal. These are really great for mapping because they form really obvious, nice outcrops and also prominent ridges that go all the way from the road and across the landscape here and all the way heading towards the stream. So actually what we can do is as we are mapping these onto our map, we can walk along the ridges and map out those extents of this rock type. Now let's map this geological unit onto our geological map. So the first step is we need to get all of our kit ready. So we need our field notebook, we need our compass, we need our pencils, and now we're ready to document some of our observations. We start by noting down all the key items for the start of the day, including the date, the weather, the general location, the aims of the day, so mapping out some boundaries in this case. Now let's start this locality. We start by describing where we are, so thinking about the fact that we're on these large flat slabs of brownish rock. So we want a brief location description for each locality and of course we will have a locality number that goes in the margin. Okay, so it is currently 10.17am so I'm going to write that in the margin. I've got my locality number one and what we need to do is now work out the grid reference. Do to work that out is to think what can we around us. So I can see the bend of the road coming around and there's another bend just right here. If I look on the map you can see that there's that big bend which comes around, then we cross over a bridge, then we come down and then there is um, another bend and then a, a sort of sharp bend there. So the road, you've got the big bend up there, comes over the bridge, there's a slight bend and then To get a better idea of where I am, I will now take some bearings to those landmarks that I've identified on the map. So I'll use the site on my compass, I'll line it up with the two bends on the map and then triangulate my position to be sure of my location on the map. By doing this triangulation we can sort of pinpoint where we are. It is then possible to work out a grid reference and write that down as an eight figure grid reference in the margin next to this locality. make systematic observations of this rock type, so looking at both the macro and micro scale features. I then systematically write these down, starting at the outcrop scale. So thinking about the fact we're looking at large, sort of table size outcrops, um, 10 to 20 meters in size in some places. Obviously some are a lot smaller, um, some are more on the order of um, a couple of meters. So we've got very well bedded sequence of rocks where I am stood on these large flat outcrops. Now I'm going to take a strike and dip 
of the bedding surface. So there's some really nice planar surfaces here which are ideal for uh, taking strike and dip. So I'm first of all finding the horizontal with my compass. So I'm using the spirit level on my compass to find horizontal. I am then going to rotate the compass housing so my north arrows line up. My strike is around 065. Yeah. Now with the Torridon I would so I'm lining up the lines on the bottom of my compass with lines on my map. So just do my little strike and now I need to work out which way it is dipping. So strike was pretty much like that. I could even draw that on the rock foot. She's dipping about 10 degrees and we're dipping in this direction which is towards the basically to the south. And I put my and I'm just gonna write my 10 degrees like that. So I've now got my outcrop, I found where I was, I've I've drawn my outcrop and I've done my strike and dip. So but I might put a little one next to that dip over here, so it was 065 20 to the south. Yeah, so that's what I was doing. 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 The fact that they're shallowly dipping to the south southeast, you can see the strike and dip symbol which is in the margin of my notebook. And thinking about the contacts with the beds, that it's mostly continuous, although there are sort of lenticular um, parts of the bedding in places. We can now look at the features that we can see in the rock, and I start off by making a geological field sketch. So I've noted some of the key fit features. So I've got a title on my sketch, I've got the orientation and a scale of 60 centimeters. I've then annotated some key points such as some of the lenticular bedding, which is the coarse grained part. So we've got more pebble and coarse grain size, poorly sorted material. I've noted some graded bedding, and some other parts towards the bottom of the, the outcrop were lenticular shaped contacts. Now we can do a detailed description of our observations. So I've systematically worked my way through a series of observations which I've written down with subheadings. So starting from the colour, we've got this reddish brown, uh, mostly sort of fresh surface that we can see on the rocks. Um, stratification, we've got largely continuous bedding which is about 10 to 20 centimetres thick but it is lenticular in parts and these sort of lenses are on the order of 10 to 30 centimetres sized with larger pebble sized material within those lenses. Sedimentary structures, I can see cross bedding in sort of 10 to 20 centimetre thick beds and laminations which are dipping in both directions in some places, um, although in others we've sort of seen a uniform direction. There's graded bedding in some parts of the bed with um, grain size ranging from pebble to coarse grain size. There's trough cross laminations as well. Can't see any fossils. The texture is, the grain size is cobbled to medium sized grain, it's poorly to moderately sorted, angular to sub-rounded. An average composition is about 40% quartz, about 50 to 60% feldspar and some lithic, so probably 5 to 10%. So this sort of classifies it as a lithic arcose. So finally I can now interpret what is my rock type here. I am pretty sure we are in the Torridon group, especially from my previous observations at Clactol and along the shores of Loch Assin. The colour suggests we're in a subaerial but depositional environment on land. Cross bedding, trough cross bedding, pebbly channels suggest sediments deposited in a river setting. So I'm now happy that I have the Torridon. I can now colour this in on my map and also put a coloured square in the margin of my notebook. 
In order to fully represent this Torridon outcrop on my map, I am walking around trying to gauge the shape and size of the outcrop, which I will then colour in on my map, looking at how it forms in the landscape and how I'm going to represent that as a coloured outcrop on my map. I've now walked you through the how to systematically make notes and produce a geological map outcrop in the field. So we first of all worked out the location where we were on the map, we then systematically described the rock, worked out what it was, then we picked colour, we coloured in our outcrop outlining it, then we took a structural measurement and put that measurement on our map and in our field notebook.